Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Kristen Foster, the Senior Vice President of Data Science at 8451. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we're talking to Kristen Foster, the Senior Vice President of Data Science at 8451. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Kristen, (laughs) hello and welcome. Hello, Shannon. Thanks for having me. Uh, Thanks so much for being here. And uh, so tell me, you're the Senior Vice President of Data Science at 8451. So tell me about 8451. Absolutely. So 8451 uh, we are a retail data science, insights, loyalty, and media company. And we work with the Kroger company, CPGs, agencies, publishers, and some of our other partners to, to create personalized and valuable experiences for our shoppers across the entire path to purchase. We are a wholly owned subsidiary of the Kroger company, which is a grocery retailer currently operating in about 28 banners, 35 states. And at 8451, um, especially my team, we're really focused on building those cutting edge data science solutions and really focused on fueling that customer-centric journey across all those things, across loyalty, insights, retail, media, healthcare, all of those different components. And I think, you know, 8451, it's a it's a unique name too. So I can quickly explain what what that is. So we are 8451 is actually the longitude of our headquarters in the Cincinnati office. We do have um, other locations as well. I actually work out of our Chicago office, but it is our longitude uh, coordinates in uh, Cincinnati. And that is because we are really anchored to Kroger. We are a a part of the Kroger ecosystem and we really like to, you know, look at data longitudinally and really understand the connections that it can make to create those, you know, relevant, valuable experiences for our customers. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. I love that background of that name. <laughs> that's that's it's very unique. interesting. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but tell me, so um, so what do you do for 8451? What does your typical work week look like as the senior VP of data science? Yeah, so we are, um, you know, I would say there's there's so much to think about when it, I, I don't even think I could talk about a typical work week, but let me kind of quickly first talk about a little bit around, again, what, what we're doing and then the role I play with that. So, you know, we have data science teams currently at 8451. We have about 300 data science researchers that fall under the function um, yeah. that, that I lead and support. Um, and like I said before, we're really, we have um, data scientists and researchers and ML engineers and analysts and data analysts working yeah. with our data asset across many different pillars um, to, to develop those capabilities and develop those solutions. So not only are we doing things in retail media and CPG insights and some of those some of those areas, we're also really working to build and deploy analytical solutions across the, the entire Kroger ecosystem. So that'll range from forecasting to influence retail app operations, for an example, or store ordering, uh, assortment optimization to make sure we have the right products in the right store based on who's shopping those stores, um, all the way to helping our kind of category managers or our merchants make more data-driven decision-making. Um, a big thing that, that our teams do, our data science teams do that, you know, Kroger is often known for is really focused on 
um, sending really relevant coupons to our, our loyal customer base. So taking oh, yeah. the, the data that we have and really making sure we're, we're optimizing the offers to, to, to thank you and reward you for the loyalty that you, you provide Kroger by giving you the things that are going to matter most to you. So we do all of that across all of those data science teams, across all those different pillars. And we're really lucky to have a, a really rich data asset to do that with. That's amazing. Uh, you know, it's so funny when you're shopping, you know, you don't think about those things, but it is, it's so important. Uh, and, and it's, I love that the Kroger has invested so heavily in data science. Absolutely. To make those, those customer differences. So tell me, Kristen, so was this the dream when you were, so like, say you were six years old, you know, yeah. what was the dream when you, um, to what do you wanted to be when you grew up? You know, um, Definitely not when I was six years old. I think when I was six years old, I, I had a whole, I made a whole like um, school in my basement back in Iowa where I grew up because I really wanted to be a teacher and I still love teaching and developing oh, people. Nice. So that part has never gone away, but I always, yeah. I always wanted to, to go the teacher route back in the day. But I would say uh, even when I was in college, this absolutely wasn't on my kind of even, I don't think any sort of uh, place I thought I would end up is where I am today. Um you know, definitely not data science or technology at that point earlier in my college career, not grocery retail, um, not on my bingo card. But, you know, now I've been in technology and in a technology role for, for nearly 20 years, and I really can't imagine doing anything else. And I think where it like kind of all started to click for me um, was back in college. Um, and I went to the University of Iowa and I was in business school. And um, at that point, I just, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, you know, I was thinking advertising, I was thinking finance, I, I didn't know. So I was doing a lot of different things, but I happened to take one course. It was actually one of a, a summer session uh, that I ended up staying in Iowa City. And I took one course where I really saw like the power of data in business oh. and the power data and applying data in the right way and how that can impact your business and, and impact uh, decision-making. And we had the opportunity in that course to work with like a local business where we took some of their data and helped create a loyalty program to help them understand how to, to work differently or engage differently with their customer base to, to, again, going back all the way to almost 20 years later to what I do today to make it a relevant and valuable experience for them. And that's where I was like, you know what? this is pretty fun. I really like this. I like the analytical aspect. I like the data, but I like the application of it. I really, you know, could never be in a role that was too theoretical because I think being able to see it come to life is, is where re re I really enjoy it. So I went back and I was like, are there, are there careers in this? And that's where I started to, to get into a, to my first job, which was actually at an insurance company where I learned stats. I learned modeling. I learned um, a lot of the kind of foundational components that are, are critical to, to kind of a foundational data science background in that role. And that's where, that's how I got to start the start of my career, at least. Oh, that's amazing. And kudos to Iowa for having that class because so many, you know, especially in business, they leave the data part out, mm -hmm. you know, and it is so critical to making good business decisions. So that's very cool. So, okay. So tell me, so you get your first job in insurance. Um, yes. So, and that's, and you said you started modeling and, and um, so what was your, how did your passion develop from there? And, and then where did you go? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. And I have, you know, like I said, I've been in um, roles in technology that have been on data for, for my whole career, but I have done a few different different things across that. Like I said, I, it's probably been across three main companies that I've worked at. The, the one I'm at today, 8451, I've actually been here a little over 12 years. So this is where I've spent most of my career to date. But before, you know, I, like I said, I started in that insurance industry, and that is where I learned statistical coding and data analytics. And it was in a marketing department. We actually were taking um, kind of at, the, that, at that point direct mail and really yeah. helping to, to optimize those campaigns, optimize the targeting and response modeling that, that we did, as well as then measure the impact of them. And like, again, that's where it almost reinforced how much I enjoyed um, data analytics and technology and wanted to continue down that path. That was in Des Moines and I actually just wanted to move to a bigger city. So that's where I kind of took my next step was, you know, wanting to, to get to, to somewhere a little bit different than, than Des Moines and uh, found myself in Chicago, which I've now been um, ever since. 
And the, the, the next company I worked at is a market research firm in downtown Chicago. And there, I, I also loved it. It was a, you know, real fun, laid back uh, culture, learned so much, a really uh, a culture focused on, on development and learning. And there I had the opportunity, which was really good for me to try a lot of different types of discipline in this space. So, you know, I first one was really around you know, marketing analytics and some of those components. And at my next company where I was for a little over six years, um, I was in one role that was really heavy programming and automation, really skewed more almost. It was still, um, I think, technically in the like data science analytics function or discipline, but really skewed almost towards the, the engineering uh, front and programming. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about kind of how all the data fits together, how to optimize code, but it was not my passion, but it was really good for me to do. Um, so I did that for a while. I actually was in a product manager, product owner role there for a while, where I learned a lot more about the importance of the user experience, how to ensure we're, we're iterating and developing over time and continuing to improve our products and what that kind of roadmap and cycle looked like, which again, I, I find so much makes me so much better at my job today that I was able to do that. But again, not necessarily um, where I found my passion. And I then I went back to uh, another role at that company where it was more on taking the data and doing the analysis, telling the story, helping our clients understand the impact and how they could use that data differently. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, again, almost reinforced similar to my first company, the, how much I, I loved um love that aspect. So it was a lot of different paths that helped yeah. me kind of reinforce then, okay, now where I'm going to my next spot, what do I really want to focus on? Um, and that's where I then decided to, 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 to come to at that time, it was called Dunhumby, but now 8451, um, yeah. where, where I've been ever since. And actually I was, uh, introduced to the company through an old mentor, an old manager of mine. who's now one of my very, very closest mentors and allies and friends, who was like, you know, you've been working in insurance and financial services so far. Like, let me tell you about this data asset I have within grocery, what he was doing. And um, he was talking about it because you think about the grocery data, how much it is, how massive it is. And yeah. you think about the regularity of grocery shopping, the frequency, the power of what you can do with that data was so exciting to me. Uh, so I ended up coming and and have, like I said, been here ever since and been despite being here 12 years, still been across many parts of our business. So I've been on media, I've been on our insights, I've been on our merchandising before I got into my role now uh, leading the function. Oh, that's so exciting. I love that you have explored so many of the disciplines within data management, because there are so many, right? Mm -hmm. So many different aspects and so many different ways to play with with data. <laughs> so, um, so you mentioned um, data storytelling and mm -hmm. that's kind of been your passion. Tell me a little bit about that. We haven't touched on that a lot in this podcast. So I'm so yeah. tell me a little about data you know, storytelling. Mm -hmm. So some of the components of, especially in, in some of my, of my roles around, the, I think, you know, a lot of times you think about data or you think about the models or the science that you're building. Mm -hmm. They don't have the, 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 the value and the power without having the, um, I guess, ex acceptance and adoption of the business on what it's doing. So even mm -hmm. if it's like a model or data that's integrated into a system, being able to make sure people are understanding what that data is doing, what that science is doing and how it can be applied is so valuable to get that adoption. Again, whether it's fully automated or whether it's something that then they're using the output to make a decision on. So I found that like being able to take all those components and actually be able to work back and translate what it means and what it matters being the one of the most critical skills I've been able to develop because that's when the power comes. That's when the value comes with the data is when people understand how to use it and what it can do and how they can make decisions with it. So, you know, I, whether it's through kind of some of the, the visualization that we're able, we were able to do, or even some of the, the articulation of, of what it is and why it matters. Um, I found uh, a lot of interest in, in, in my current role, which is a little bit different because I'm not doing as much of, of the, the day to day. I found like one thing I, I love doing is continuing to help people improve like data literacy and understanding the impact. And so much of that has to come through, through that storytelling aspect of taking really technical things and making it um, consumable for, for everyone that needs to be using 
the data and insights to, to make their decisions. Uh, and your your initial passion of wanting to be a teacher certainly comes yeah, out in that, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DBTALKS for 20% off your purchase. I love that uh, throughout your career, you have been very curious. You've explored different options. You've followed your passion. Um, you have a mentor. And so mm -hmm. you're learning and getting advice and getting help. And I think all very important things. So um, so tell me, what uh, what was your biggest lesson so far in your career? You know, that's a great question. I think it's probably a few things. I don't have the biggest one. A few things I've almost already touched on that I can that I can reinforce. The first one, I well, there might be a few, so you can tell me if I'm doing too many. Uh, the first one is like there is no one path, and I think that's what's really exciting, especially as you uh, start a, a career in technology. There's just so many different directions you can take it. So don't be a, for me at first. I was like, oh, can I actually try this? But um, it was so good for me to explore and try different things because one, it helped yeah. me it helped me determine my passion. It also helped me determine like what I was good at and confident at and maybe what I wasn't as as a strong in. But all of those things really helped me kind of round me out to be what I where I am today. So, you know, everything I've tried, I think it's just really made me kind of better uh, at what I'm able to do today. So the fact that there's not one path to follow. Um, and then the second one that I think is really, at least been really, really important to me personally is around that network of people surrounding you. So mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I think having, I have really strong mentors, but not just one, it's almost like, and I, I've heard this term used many times and I like to use it and I've adapted it myself, like your own personal board of directors and really mm -hmm. making sure that group of individuals is, um, going to challenge their one, they can help lift me up when I need to be lifted up. Cause I do, you know, there's always, always that confidence. Like, am I, do I, do I have a right to be here that creeps up with me that it's good to have those people like being like, Hey, remember you did all these things. Yeah. You have a right to be here. You've proven yeah. your, your kind of um, ability to do this, but also not be afraid to challenge and help me help identify the areas where, you know, I might have gaps or I might need to approve or call, call me out when they're seeing things that maybe go against either, you know, my personal values or what I, wh where I need to continue to grow. So that's been another thing that's been really valuable and, and a lesson that's taken me. I've always really valued relationships, but the importance of having the, the diversity of different backgrounds, different industries, different tenures of people has been something that that's been really valuable to me. And I'm going to say one other thing, which is like advocating for myself. I did not do that early in my career. I did not. I just kind of went with the like, OK, I'll, I'm not going to now I, I advocate for myself. I'm not afraid to highlight what I've done well. I'm not afraid to speak up about what I what I want to do and why I believe I, I have a right to do it. So that's probably the third lesson that I've gotten much better at uh, in recent years than I was when I started my career. Oh, all great lessons. I And I, I love that you have a board supporting mm -hmm. you. <laughs> that's actually the first time I've heard that. And that is, oh my gosh, that's so fantastic. Um, that is, that is amazing. Yeah. And I love that you um, are, you know, that, you know, we always, so, so many, I, you know, I talk about this on the podcast all the time that, you know, i you know, had this perception that, you know, you have to be perfect. Like I had to go into my job and have to be perfect and I had to know everything and had to know, you know, but, um, but letting go of that and learning and, you know, and, and it's going, Hey, where do I need to learn? It's just so important. and so nice to learn early. <laughs> yeah. And I found that like, when you are willing, like no one knows everything and no one's perfect. So being able right. to like, be humble enough to recognize where oh, this isn't my, I don't know, or I need some support or, you know, I'm not the right person yeah. to do this actually, I think really helps build your, build trust with your teams and your peers. Um, and that way too, because I think it, it is, it is so true. Yeah. So tell me, um, Kristen, so having worked with data since college, then, you know, what is your definition of data? 
Oh my goodness. So that's, there's, there's so much like now, right. The world is so, so digitized. Like it's just, everything feels to be data right now. I will say here at 8451, um, since, you know, we we're a data science company that is our bread and butter that are, that's the heart of what we do. Uh, and we like to call data the, the lifeblood, like this is the lifeblood of our organization because everything that we're doing is leveraging data to be able to solve these business problems. We want to use that to make sure we have the right products at the right store at the right price to make it as easy as possible to shop and both mm-hmm. in-store and online to be able to, you know, really reward our customers with the things that matter most to them and um, making sure that they're able to, to get that experience that they expect of us with the, the loyalty and trust they provide. Um, so it's really all fueled by data. And then yeah. when you think about it and it's like data and it's like raw form, right? There's facts, statistics, information, um, and being able to cobble it all together into the right thing is where I think there's just there's just so many so much that you can do with it. With grocery in particular, you can all we can all we all grocery shop and we all eat, so we can all everyone pretty much can relate. But when you even think about the grocery receipt that you get when you leave the store, think about all just that one piece of paper. How much information is on that? That's so powerful. You know, like the time of day. You know, the store location. If they have like a loyalty card, you know, kind of that's tied to it. And then you can look at each individual, each raw like metric that exists and learn so much about the price that was paid and everything. Then you can start to create derived metrics and derive data from that to say, oh, this person bought 10 things, but six of them were vegetables and fruit. There's a heavy produce trip. And then start to make, so that's another another kind of con, uh, form of data. And then go to the inferred data almost to say, all right, they bought, I don't know, tortillas and avocados and peppers and chicken and beans and rice. They're having a taco night. So you can start to think about all that you're able to do. And that's just one tiny piece of paper. When you think about how often people grocery shop and how everyone grocery shops, it, it really kind of lends itself to think about how many different ways you can de- develop, derive, and create data from those from those experiences to really then create the the things that matter most. Ah, uh, so true. So, uh, do you see then the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next ten years, and why? You know, it it's really um, like. Interesting. I definitely see it increasing. And I think I mentioned it before, right? The amount of data we have today versus 10 years ago versus 10 years prior, it's just like drastically, drastically higher. So I it think it, it only continues to um, like increase or highlight the importance of managing data effectively, efficiently um, is going to be. And the other thing I think is really important because of the increased data, whether it's a role in data management or any other role that someone takes is the importance for everyone, regardless of if they're in a data specific role or not to continue to increase like that data literacy because it can't be limited to technologists anymore. So that's another interesting kind of lens that I I always consider as we think about how much data is increased in addition to, 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 to data management. But I do think, you know, the uh, the number of roles in that data quality data management is going to only continue to to increase. You know, my role is data science, so I know that what we're able to build and create is only as good as the data that's that's being that's being captured and the feedback loops on that data and the ability to access that data. That is that is what matters most for us to do the things that we need to with. So with so much more data at our, our fingertips across no matter what industry you're in. I only see that becoming increasingly important. Now, I do think most likely that there's going to always be, which there always is, shifts in the types of data jobs that exist, especially as you think through technology and how much has shifted with, you know, different AI technologies and how that might change, you know, data cleansing and other components of of the data management life cycle, but I don't see that changing the importance of the number of roles and the the types of roles that that will exist. Indeed. Yeah. You know, there's so many questions, you know, with generative AI out there and, you know, how is the landscape going to change? But I think you're right. I mean, we have seen, and maybe have some advice for, you know, even we've seen so many companies try to stand up machine learning and try to stand up AI, but, and then, 
fall flat because they forgot to do the data prep. They forgot to do the cleansing. There was no data governance or quality built in. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we need a data modeler. We're seeing so many data modeling jobs come be available. So so many brand new data modelers because suddenly they're like, oh, we need a data model in order to stand this up. Mm -hmm. you know, is there I how have you been able to stand up that that new tech and keep up with the new tech? Yeah, it is, you know, the tech's moving so fast. It's like yeah. every day we're, we're learning something new and there's something right. uh, uh, continuing to come forth. But I think quite of what you're highlighting is, is is exactly where we're at in the sense of, you know, especially as more and more um, of our business counterparts are hearing about this technology and the impact it can have. Like so much of our time right now is like, absolutely. Like yeah, Gen AI can do so much, even when you think about access to insights and ability to, to derive from data, but it's still based on that foundation. So we're doing a lot right now with like roles like the data modelers or some of our data analytics teams to focus on how can we use some of that technology, especially some of the advances in, in Gen AI as an example to help with our like backend data components. So then we can start to show the the, the value that can have to then get to a, a different user experience or kind of front end uh, changes that we're making as well. But there is so much changing on a daily basis and so much kind of foundational things that need to be true in order to, to get value out of that technology. And again, you highlight data governance and we have science governance, which are just such critical components of that, that foundation mm -hmm. to have really established before trying to to kind of deploy anything with those new technologies. Yeah, very nice. Well, Kristen, this has been fantastic. This is just amazing. Thank you so much. So I'd be remiss. So it, how would people find out more about 8451 and what y'all do? Yeah, so uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd love to chat and connect with any of anyone that's interested. And then I, I'd encourage people to go to our website, which is 8451.com. You can see a lot more about us. You can see roles that we have across, you know, data science and engineering and other technology roles that that exist and um, find out a lot more about us. Oh, amazing. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Really have enjoyed this. This is some great advice for everybody out there. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. It's been fantastic. <laughs> and to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time and stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.